And second one is from much deeper in the book. Uh, the situation is that there's a boy looking for a girl in Esquibol. Uh, but there's a thread of dislocation which runs through it, which I thought maybe resonates with what Gayatri might read. When I woke, I couldn't place where I was. This kind of thing had begun to happen to me. It wasn't a failure of memory, just that it felt surreal that I should be asleep on bleachers between the rivers Esquibo and Pomeroon, mixed up deep but in nothing. While recovering my balance, I'd be assailed by a variety of Indian flashbacks. A lover that was or wasn't, breaking a window in the building compound, the tension of the house when I abandoned my cast thread. It would take 15 or 20 minutes to shake this mood. Sometimes there would be a mild headache. It was turning to dark when I woke and it disoriented me further. The sun had lost shape, hours had been consumed, the ideas in my head had been foiled. Unsure of the next step, I did as usual, I walked. I walked along the straight open highway, unsuited for walks. To the right were the village houses, beyond them the corrida and black sage bush on the South American foreshore. To the left were the paddy fields. Above, sunset was a mauve smear of a man and his preoccupations. There was mud in the air, and here and there one could hear stray voices beating with phrases like shine seeds and pull and shrimp. From the fields came the trombone of cows. Gudhali was the beautiful Hindi word for sunset, dust raised by cows returning home. Gudhali, so right with day clean. With the slightest intimation, a rustle of leaves, a flutter of hidden birds into trees, the pressure was released. I was stunned by the intensity. Rain blue and lilac cuts over the paddy fields. The palms at the margins were bending. Mud ex exploded onto my dust-encrusted dust feet, into the crevices between my toes. On the nape and the forearms, the new air felt like new skin. It was like water bombs. I ran for a shed in the distance. It was a small lumber yard. I stood inside the curtain of corrugated rivulets. The thing took a pounding, rising and falling in waves over the rafters, flapping. In utter dim, twilight was obliterated. Darkness was ecstatic, scent seeped from the earth, the bushes. The world was raw and desperate, all contrition was washed off. It was ten minutes till the wind abated and the zinc settled that I caught the folkish Bhojpuri rhythms jangling through the rain. Sounds affect me in the most visceral way. I felt a little drunk and perverted. The mood of silver anklets, lipped navels, sex in a haystack. I walked around the drenched perimeter. The sound grew closer. Lotela, kub lotela. I knew from so many very lines it was a red hot drunken chutney. The tolak's beat from necklace of a symbol and ha symbols and harmonium it made you feel to dunk your head in a bucket of rum, spin in circles. It was an old Indian theme, wife and brother-in-law, rolling, soaping, bathing, and it ended in an Indian way, with wife beating. Three men were inside the lumber yard, surrounded by logs of timber, ghostly around the flambeau. Their faces were full of rum, a portable stereo, a tiffin with filari. The smell of mango sour. There was a fourth man, he rain danced in white arcs. Who are Jambi there? Someone said. I introduced myself. I was an Indian man. They fussed over me. They plied me with their alcohol. The sharp ferment of bush rum. Two shots to begin with. One for rain, one for blood. They were the lumberyard watchies, small scale rice farmers, a postman. They could be 30, they could be 50, I couldn't tell. They'd carry the iguana in the bakta, they traded rifle cartridges with amaranthids for the iguana, they traded cases of smuggled Venezuelan beer for the cartridges. They talked about flims, about Dharmendra, about Viru of Shole and Viru of Cricket. Man bath like he's sleeping with one eye open and give one bath to mosquito. Bushram has a stabbing localized high. One can press the points of intoxication. Evasions dissolved in drink and rain I let slip it had to do with a girl. The floor was smooth and concrete. Crapo leapt on it, earthworms crept in and back out. Dry logs absorbed the smell of rain and the vibrations of the chutney, and the chutney clanged on. Fulori bina chutney kaise bani? I had thought of chutney as music without pain, but had begun to see I was wrong. Reggae was the music of slavery. Its impulse was resistance, confrontation. A homeland severed so absolutely seized back by the force of imagination or ideology. 
Chutney was the music of, ind of indenture. Its impulse was preservation, then assimilation. There was a pain in this act of preservation, a homeland part remembered and protected, part lost and lingering. Hey brother, I've made chutney good, you know. Is only one thing keeping me back? Contacts, I asked. Genetics, man, me not get the vice. They spoke of Hindi films, of Bachan, of Bachan, Bachan having come one time to play a month. After a while, I couldn't follow. The wind had risen again, playing with the sink. The intonations were too fast, drunk. Still, the situation was effortless. I couldn't have been in it in India, no chance. And standing at the open back of the lumber yard, the sleeper logs in proximity, looking out into the fields was the feeling of traveling Indian railways, the great Gangetic sweep, a country palpable, unknowable. It was hours when the rain tapered to a drizzle we left. We were going to Bunny's, the night was fresh and silhouetted, Crapper was singing tenor. The wind lifted the smell of wet paddy from the fields, faintly like asafoetida. We passed the house across the bleachers. Who live in there? I asked. Churail live in there. She had Churail. At Bunny's, the night was ending. The room was thick with alcohol and chat. Bushram yielded to five year. Fairy lights were wound around the safety grill. I couldn't tell if left over from, from the valley or in anticipation of Christmas. Against the dim lighting, they made the mood of a finished occasion. The sound system issued old Hindi film music of longing, of suppression, the idea of what it is to love, what it is to lose, Indian fatalism. I looked around me, middle-aged Guyanese men in caps, t-shirts and short, short straightforward moustaches. They chide they tried rice in the morning, brewed bush rum, sold timber, worked the post office, or who knows, done nothing, or big fights. And now they were happy and they were sad and the world was loaded with a thing you could not touch. Hey bunny, jam the mic, we get it in German here, someone said, and they were singing. So Hani Dhal Chukki, obscure among Hindi film classics, 40, 50 years old, a man called Jabi Lal sang. He was joined by a few others from their spots. I watched mesmerized. To sing in a language one doesn't know, it seemed to me an act of devotion. The half-baked, half-felt, curialized delivery, I felt it in my bones. You're welcome, brother, Chavilal said to me after. Rafi, you ain't got to understand words. Rafi, in we blood. And Kishore, I asked. A great man, but you're welcome. When Rafi sing a dance song, you dance. When he sing a sad song, you cry. When he sing a love song, woman get fever. Rabbi, Rafi get inside of you, he become you, and you become him. He went to a line from Sohani Rath. Tadap rahe hai hum yaha, tumhare intazar mein. Hear how we play with the syllable, make ten from one. Now that is feeling. You know what it means, I asked. Oh, bad, bad, but I feel it, my brother, I feel it. Let me tell you one story. When I was in school, I get suspended one time. Because why? Because in the patriotic song, I replaced Guyana with India. I would spend the night in Chabi Lal's, the mile to his house, we walked and sang, Kishore upon my insistence, Ye Dilna Hota Bechara and the earth, under the wetted stars, the floating drizzle. These songs, these fields, in one of these houses, her body in a damp bed. Thank you.